Guys, this is uh, Casey here. You're tuning in to HowToPlayStock.com. Uh, today's video, I wanted to cover the Bitcoin hard fork. It is August 1st, 2017, and the uh, the hard fork has taken place. All right. And what's interesting about this is there was a lot of speculation about Bitcoin um, and its price. Okay, there was a lot of people that said that the Bitcoin hard fork uh, may devalue Bitcoin and you could see something, you know, almost instant as far as price drops and they'd be very dramatic. Now that was speculation. Uh, today I checked Bitcoin's price. We're still at $2,726. <clears throat> okay, so we've had a change of a negative 2.76%. Um, that's not, that's nothing big. So for people who are speculating that Bitcoin was going to fall like a rock, you know, I, I just, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but it's definitely not doing it right now. Um, uh, and you've got Ethereum right underneath it, uh, with a 10.89% change in the positive. So Ethereum is actually going up right now, which is good. Uh, we got Litecoin, which is at 42.65, and guys, there's a lot of people saying Litecoin uh, may take it may take over as the king of Bitcoin here in the future. Uh, it's because Litecoin's got much faster transaction times uh, compared to Bitcoin, and it's it's got an overall larger uh, circulating supply. Okay, Bitcoin's got 16,482,375 Bitcoin, and uh, Litecoin's at 52,268,732 uh, Litecoin. So, I've got my eyes on Litecoin right now. If you're new to the crypto scene, uh, you might want to take a look at Litecoin as well, do some research on it, and, uh, you know, find out more about it, because I think Litecoin does offer... Um, a better solution to Bitcoin with with Bitcoin's like slower transaction speeds and stuff like that. But uh, I want to get back to the uh, hard fork here. So sorry for changing the subject there. Um, today's video though was about the Bitcoin hard fork. Uh, it has taken place. And this article I found pretty interesting because a lot of people don't even understand what, what the hard fork is. So I want to go ahead and and read this article here for you and just cover it briefly because it talks about uh, wearing f factions or splitting Bitcoin uh, in two and here's what you need to know this uh, article is back it's it's by Jack Morsey and uh, says the wild world of Bitcoin is about to get a whole lot wilder on August 1st 2017 the preeminent cryptocurrency is set to break in two uh, two wearing factions fundamentally divided on Bitcoin's future are coming to a head and the impending split could either save Bitcoin or doom it. Now this is where that speculation comes into play that I was just talking about. Uh, you know, if it's if it's dooming Bitcoin and Bitcoin's doomed, well, it doesn't really reflect it in the price right now. I mean, just looking at the price that we just looked at uh, at the current moment, I, I don't it, I don't think it's doomed. It may change some things, uh, you know, as far as the split, which is called a hard fork. They're saying it will result in two separate and distinct cryptocurrencies. So you got Bitcoin Cash, which is the new cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin. And uh, it also has the potential to create billions of dollars worth of new cryptocurrency out of thin air. <clears throat> okay, so... The whole reason for this hard fork to begin with was more of a supply issue. Uh, a lot of the miners who are mining Bitcoin were finding it harder to solve algorithms when they're mining Bitcoin and it, it was making it harder for uh, Bitcoin to be created, which, you know, therefore it was playing around with the, uh, it was affecting the supply. Now, Bitcoin is considered a store of value. So I think one of the reasons it's considered a store of value is because there's only so much it can be created. Uh, there's, you know, reading on here, what they're saying is that's not, 
it's not really what it's about um, as far as the potential to create billions of dollars worth of new cryptocurrency. That's not what this is really about. Bitcoin, as it currently stands, they said is in trouble. And with so much money on the line, opposing parties have naturally come forward with plans to save it. And surprise, they all don't agree on the solution. Uh, that resulting disagreement is set to play out in full force at 5.20 a.m. on August 1st with the launch of the Bitcoin Cash Protocol, which they you know, have already launched. And many in the Bitcoin community have no choice but to hold their breath and wait to see how it all goes down. So what exactly is going on here? Why is Bitcoin set to fork? Who are the players involved? And what does this mean for the future of cryptocurrency? Uh, those are all good questions. Uh, so they're saying here Bitcoin is at a crossroad. Um, fundamentally at, at issue is something called block size. The Bitcoin of today has a limit of one megabyte of data per block on the blockchain. And back when Bitcoin was first created, this was more than enough to process every transaction in a timely manner. So you recall at the beginning of this article, I was telling you that Bitcoin's got a slower transaction time. This is what they're talking about, and this is what I was referring to. However, as the popularity of the cryptocurrency has grown, so is the trading volume. As it now stands, the number of transactions is limited to around three per second. And a single transaction on the blockchain, essentially the act of making a payment, can be delayed for extended periods of time as it waits for available space on the next block. So I've experienced this for myself uh, when I'm when I'm collecting uh, Satoshi from the faucets. You know, it'll take sometimes when I make a withdrawal or deposit and put it into a uh, say a micro wallet. Sometimes it'll take 24 to 48 hours for it to process. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind with Bitcoin. If you go to say a a local store. You know, and we're looking at it from a use case uh, perspective. You know, let's say you go to, to uh, a store locally and you're wanting to buy, say, a pair of shoes with Bitcoin. Okay. And this, this store, this physical brick and mortar store accepts Bitcoin. The problem you're going to have is if you pay Bitcoin, you know, up front for these shoes from a brick and mortar store, well, you, you're not going to you're not going to get your shoes because they're going to want their bitcoin first, right? I mean, that's what happens in a transaction. When you're dealing with cash, you know, you pay the cash right there, the store collects the cash, they give you the the shoes or the product. With bitcoin, uh they don't get their bitcoin right away. They have to wait for it to, you know, um basically you know, complete the transaction on the blockchain. So you could be delayed for extended periods of time as it waits for available space on the next block, like they're saying here. And if they're not getting their Bitcoin, they're not getting paid, well, you're not getting your shoes. So that's the that's the problem Bitcoin runs into. And uh, with Litecoin, for instance, you, your transaction times are almost instant. So... That's why I was saying earlier, Litecoin has the potential to become the next, basically, Bitcoin just for that reason alone. And I think the uh, the community behind Bitcoin is realizing this, and they're 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 realizing that okay, we gotta, you know, if we want Bitcoin to be around and still be the king of all cryptocurrencies, we're gonna have to do something here with the blockchain and the block size uh, and, and the code for that matter. And evolve it to the next level so that it can still compete. So I'm still in on Bitcoin at this moment. Uh, my own personal opinion with Bitcoin is that it is uh, it's still a solid you know cryptocurrency. I mean it's it's the godfather of cryptocurrencies. Okay. So I don't think it's going anywhere, to be honest with you. It'll still be used as a store of value. Uh now, for Bitcoin Cash, like like they're saying here, we'll just have to wait and see, because nobody really knows at this point, you know, if uh, if Bitcoin Cash is gonna, you know, take over Bitcoin. Um, so, <laughs> what they're saying here is one of the seemingly easy solutions 
uh, let's see here. Couldn't the Bitcoin community simply increase the block size? After all, raising it from one megabyte to say two megabyte would be technically straightforward, assuming you can get everyone to agree on it. Uh, but therein lies the rub. Bitcoin is distributed and a consensus is needed to make changes to the code. It's a degree, uh, disagreement about one of those proposed changes that is behind the August 1st hard fork. A group of Bitcoin developers led by Jeff Garzik is pushing an update known as SegWit2 or the segre Segregated Witness. This update will, among other things, free up block space by removing signature data from Bitcoin transactions. This in turn will increase transaction speeds. Problem solved, right? Well, not exactly, because here's the thing. Uh, that's not all SegWit2 does. In addition to increasing block capacity, SegWit2 allows for the implementation of so-called second layer solutions, such as the Lightning Network. A second layer solution would in effect move transactions off of the blockchain, a non-starter for many in the community. So what does all this mean? Um, just to wrap it up, Bitcoin Cash is set to launch on August 1st, and in doing so, we'll take the existing Bitcoin ledger and fork off into something new. So if you currently own one Bitcoin as of 5.20 a.m. on August 1st, assuming things don't, assuming things go down as planned, you will own both one Bitcoin and one Bitcoin Cash, as long as you control your own private keys. All current Bitcoin holders will automatically own Bitcoin Cash, explains the Bitcoin Cash page. Uh, the existing ledger at the time of the split is pre preserved, thus users retain any balances they had before the split. With Bitcoin Cash uh, futures trading at $294 at this time of writing, that's a nice windfall, unless it all goes to shit in the process. Um, like I said, we're here, guys. The, the fork already happened. At this this current you know time, I'm not hearing a whole lot uh, that things went wrong. So that may change here in the next 24 hours. But as of right now, it looks like things went smooth. Um, let's see here. Continuing, no one really knows what's going to happen on August 1st. The hard fork could go smoothly, or both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash prices could plummet as exchanges struggle to keep up with panic traders. Or the fork might not even happen at all. The crew behind Bitcoin Cash could decide at the last minute to abandon its, uh, abandon its plan. Whatever happens August 1st if going to, is going to be a big day in the cryptocurrency community. And they said, we suggest you stock up on popcorn. You know, watch the movie. Uh, and right now, like I said, we'll go back here and look at the price. Bitcoin's at $2,719 down three percent so it doesn't look like it's falling off of the cliff uh, anyways i'll keep you guys up to date on the uh, hard fork as we move forward i just want to shoot this video today on that if you find the information beneficial go ahead and uh, hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel because i'll be covering uh you know different aspects of investing from cryptocurrencies to the stock market and just stock market updates as a whole uh, moving forward in the future. So uh, that's all I have for today. You guys go create a good day. And remember, income is the outcome, okay? I'll talk to you later.